It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to this middle school edition of Science Bowl. We're early in our silver anniversary year and we're so happy you're with us. Let's meet today's teams. First from Nicholas Aura Middle School, please say hello to Deborah Adili Masay, Adobe Ahanotu, and Catherine Trejo. And from Robert Goddard Middle School, we say hello to Emmanuel Demis, Kanan Mehta, and Stephen Irving. And now here are the categories of questions we use on Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen sink. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to the question difficulty with the easier questions on the left worth 5 and 10 points and the tougher ones, 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest question of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers at the end of the two rounds. We will have a winner to go on and play Thomas Pullen Middle School for the chance to go on to this year's finals in the middle school competition. Let's make sure everything's working properly. Nicholas Orem, Adobe, try that buzzer for me. Thank you. She's got a nice smile on her face. She's ready to do this thing. She and Deborah, Adili, and Catherine. And let's go to Conan. Would you try your buzzer? Thank you, Conan. And good luck to you, to Emmanuel, and to Stephen. You guys have already won because you're here representing your school as ambassadors. So we congratulate you for being here and representing each of your fine schools. We go alphabetically, N before R. So Nicholas Orem, Adobe, let's play the bowl. Give me a category and a number, please. Three things for five. Green things for five points. Teams, what same leguminous green thing follows the words cocoa, wax, lima, and string? Robert Goddard. Bean. What? Bean. Bean. Oh, sorry. Bean? Bean, sure. Cocoa beans, wax beans, lima beans, string beans. You got them all. Thank you, Steve. All right, go again. Green. Um, zoo parade for five. Soup parade for five points. Teams, what kind of animal was Paul who correctly predicted all of Spain's World Cup victories? Paul was an eight tentacled cephalopod that seemed to be wise beyond its species, Conan. Octopus. An octopus, that's right. They consulted this octopus and it seemed to always indicate that Spain would win. And it did. All right, go. Green. Um, science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. Teams, in cartoons and comic strips, when a character gets an idea, what kind of incandescent thing pops up above its head? Robert Goddard. What? Light bulb. A light bulb. Bing! Off it goes. Absolutely right. Faster on the buzzer here. Faster on the buzzer, girls, if you've got an idea. Go green. Um, Dateline Science for five. Dateline for five points. Teams, Vegetables are about to get cool because what kind of orange rabbit food is McDonald's going to sell in wrappers? Nicholas Orm? Carrots. Baby carrots, yeah, they're going to package them just like french fries. So you're going to think you're eating what you might not be, but it's going to be healthy for you. Go red. Um, body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, the forearm bone that parallels the ulna has what same name as half a circle's diameter? Robert Goddard. Radius. Radius. Good answer. Absolutely right. Good. Green. Um, uh, science potpourri for 10. Science potpourri for 10 points. Teams Nick Jonas of the Jonas Brothers appears on TV touting a blood testing system for what kind of insulin deficient disease, Robert Goddard? Yes. Yes. Diabetes. Yeah, Nick is a diabetic, and he's on TV showing you that, uh, you know, it's not something that ends your life. You can live with it. All right, 
Go again, Green. Zoo Parade for 10. Zoo Parade for 10 points. Teams, your question is as follows. The deadliest animal that has ever lived, it has killed more people than any other, is the subject of a new book called Fever about the disease malaria that has been a scourge of humankind for 500,000 years. Nicholas Oram. Mosquito. The mosquito, the deadliest animal that has ever lived. Absolutely right. Good. You got those points. Go red. Um, let's, get for, let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, during the two equinoxes that occur every year, in March and September, the sun's rays are directly over what imaginary line here on Earth? All right, Nicholas Orr. Equator. Equator. That's why they call it the equinox. Equal day and night length on both of those dates when the seasons change. 75 to 85, close game. Red. Green things for 15. Green things, 15 points. Teams, the word aggregate means like a group or an assemblage. Knowing that, which of the following fruits is known as an aggregate fruit? A melon, a banana, an apple, or a raspberry? Banana. Not a banana. And please wait till I acknowledge you before you say your answer. I, I like your enthusiasm, Dobie, but just wait. Robert Goddard, knowing that an aggregate is a group or a cluster, which of the following fruits is known as an aggregate fruit? A melon, an apple, a banana, or a raspberry? A raspberry. A raspberry. A raspberry has all those little individual parts on it. Absolutely right. Go green. Um, green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, there's a picture that goes with this question. Could you look at the monitor in the studio while we show the people at home the picture that goes with this question? Teams, in the center of that plant is a structure that its name is a homonym with a firearm. What do you call it, Conan? Pistol. Look out. The plant's got a gun. Absolutely right. Good. Go. Green. Um, zoo Parade for 15. Zoo Parade for 15 points. Teams, since this insect scrunches its body up into a U-shape as it moves, it's known as an inch worm. It is better known as the title character in a popular children's book, Nicholas Orm. Caterpillar. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Absolutely right. Good. Thank you, Catherine. You helped on that one, too. Go, Adobe. 90 mm -hmm. to 110. Your advantage. Go. Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Team's former Vice President Dick Cheney has a device in his heart called a ventricular assist, which keeps his blood flowing continuously through his circulatory system, which means you cannot feel one of these on him anymore. He has no what? Adobe. He has no, more, no blood vessels? No, he has blood vessels, but Robert Goddard, this device keeps blood flowing continuously, so if you feel him, he has no what? Pulse. He has no pulse, absolutely right. There's no give and take of the heart beating. It's a constant flow. You are all good players. That buzzer says our first round is over. Score, Nicholas Orham 90, Robert Goddard 125. Keep up your good work. We'll be back with round two in just a moment. Don't go away. And welcome back to Science Bowl. Nice to have you with us today. Six outstanding young people playing our game from two outstanding middle schools. Let's go first to Nicholas Orham and find out about the school. Adobe, nice to have you with us here. How'd they make you the captain of this team? Um, well, I was the first one who Ms. Ray Ella chose, and um, I was always the one who was scheduled the studies meetings and stuff. Yes. So you were the first one out there, and you were rewarded with this position. You're doing a really nice job, I have to say. Now, you mentioned Miss Rayella, Miss Daisy Rayella, who's the sponsor of the team, has been with us for many years. She's just terrific. And who's the principal of your school? Jackson. Okay, he's out there rooting for you, I know. Did you have any alternates on your team? Um, yeah, one of them, her name is Sandrine, yeah. Yes, and we'll bring her out in just a little while. Now, you're all wearing matching maroon polo shirts. Is that the uniform there at Nicholas Orm? Yeah, they're, they're called the Burgundy. Oh, the Burgundy, yeah. all right. Now, they, you look good. You all look good. Adobe, tell me about yourself. What do you do in your spare time? Um, uh, I, um, I watch TV or I go on the computer or... Uh, you're not telling me it's the most important thing. She's a cook. She's a good cook. <laughs> And if we go over to her house, she says she's going to whip up some chicken stew or some mac and cheese, right? Some good comfort food. Nice to have you here. Catherine, tell us what you want to do someday. I want to be a lawyer and open a pastry shop with Adobe. Wow, this sounds good. More food, more food. You guys are going to have to stay together and kind of link together as, as business women. Uh, now, you're all also musicians, is that right? Yeah. Yes, now what do you play, Adobe? Um, I play the clarinet. You play clarinet. Catherine, do you play an instrument? 
What's that? The cello. The cello, and you also take the violin and the viola. And Deborah, you take lessons, uh, violin lessons at the University of Maryland, don't you? Yes. Yeah, and tell us what you want to do someday. I want to become a violinist and a brain surgeon. Brain surgeon. I, I like that combination. You all have things that are joined together that sometimes people wouldn't imagine. That's why you're such good students, and you're doing a good job here today. Robert Goddard, nice to have you guys with us. Conan, back. Last year represented Robert Goddard, the only veteran on the panel here. Uh, you seem kind of cool, calm, and collected, so that experience helped. Uh, tell us about uh, uh, your school. Who's your principal? Um, Madame Nepay. Yes, out there, and I know is uh, thinking about you today. And the sponsor of your team? Mr. Ducha. Mr. Ducha, and he too has been with us for many years and always spends a lot of time getting the teams ready, and it always shows. And uh, uh, any alternates on your team? Uh, yes, Frederick. And Frederick, and Frederick will be out in just a little bit. And uh, Frederick's father, who we saw earlier, was a contestant on this show many years ago when he was in middle school, and we hope to introduce you to him as well. Tell us what you hope to do someday, Connor. Um, I just want a job that gives me financial security. <laughs> hey, not, hey, that's the American dream. You know, that's why we play the lottery and we go to college, we get degrees and we invest. So uh, uh, you're doing all the right stuff. You're doing it today. Stephen, nice to have you here today, young man. You do an awful lot of things in your spare time. You're a soccer player, and what's that team you play for? MFC, Metropolitan Football Club. Wonderful. And you're, are you a musician as well? Yes, I play the saxophone. Saxophone. And uh, when you're not doing that, what else do you do in your spare time? Um, I like to read. I like to read. What kind of books do you like? Um, uh, normally uh, fiction. Fiction books, yeah. Mystery. And reading, reading is the greatest predictor of success on Science Bowl, and you folks are good examples of that. Readers are good contestants. And uh, someday we're going to see you doing what? Uh, I'm going to be a marine biologist. Marine biologist. I can see you doing that. You're a disciplined young man. Emmanuel, you're a soccer player too, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. And what do you hope to do someday? Um, maybe be a, become a scientist to learn more about the planet. Yeah. It's music to my ears and our judges too. We're, we hope that uh, some of you choose science careers as a result of this and uh, certainly uh, you're doing all the right things by preparing for this game. So good luck to you in the second half here. Let's get back to our game. 90 for Nicholas Orm, 125 for Robert Goddard. Lots of points to give away. All the tough questions are left. And let's start out with Robert Goddard who gave us the last correct answer. Connor? Um, signs Potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. Teams, the monster Godzilla supposedly developed in Japan after World War II when the atomic bomb was dropped on that country and emitted a lot of what? Robert Goddard. What did you say? Hiroshima? Uh, radiation. Radiation, yes. All that radiation is thought to have created that monster that has uh, kind of lovable in some ways, too. Go, Connor. Um, body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, if you really, really love candy, you're said to have a sweet one of these. Robert Goddard. Tooth. A sweet tooth. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. A good thing to have in some ways. Go. Green. Um, let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five points. Teams, recently, recently President Obama drove one of the first ever all-electric cars produced by Chevrolet. It's called the Chevy blank Adobe. Volt. The Chevy Volt. Absolutely. Oh, you knew that one cold. Absolutely. The measurement, a unit for measuring uh, current. See. Go again. Red. Daylight signs for 10. Dateline for 10 points. Teams, the body of chess master Bobby Fischer was exhumed recently because scientists wanted to get a sample of what kind of tissue to determine if he was the father of a certain baby. They wanted to check his what? His DNA. His DNA. They had to get a sample of DNA from his corpse. Go again, red. Um... Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. I like this question. Chemicals known as thiols are found in garlic and skunk spray, so they're pretty rancid, and they have for years been added to what home fuel so that you can tell if there's a leak? Natural gas. Natural gas. If you have a house heated by natural gas, there's a gas leak, 
Natural gas really has very little odor, so they add these thiols so that you can smell it right away and call the gas company. We saw what happened in California not too long ago when that terrible explosion. But people said they were smelling gas. Red again. Green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Plants grow toward the sun. That is called positive phototropism. What part of the plant, though, is positively geotropic? Robert Goddard? The roots. The roots. Growing toward gravity is what that means, if you parse that word. Green, please. Um, zoo Parade for 20. Zoo Parade for? 20. 20 points. Teams, we all know who Sarah Palin is. She ran for vice president, and she now is endorsing other candidates. And some of the female candidates that she likes, she is giving them a nickname that has an earth sign tint to it. She calls them Mama What's. Mama What's, Robert Goddard? Uh, bears. What kind of bears? <laughs> Judges, is bears enough? We shake. We're going to give you bears. All right, Mama Bears, you got the idea of earth sign. It's Mama Grizzlies, Mama Grizzly Bears. Okay, let's turn out the light. We will give the points to the green team, and Conan, you can choose again. Um, zoo Parade for 25. Zoo Parade for 25, the big one in that category. Let's do a, a score check. Nicholas Orm has 95, Robert Goddard 125. Come on, Nicholas Orm, you need this one to get back in the game. This is 25 in... In zoo parade. All right, the big one in that category. Teams, if you know what entomology means, then you know entomophagy means an animal that eats these things for lunch. Robert Goddard. Ants? Insects. Oh, insects. Insects, absolutely right. Entomology is the study of insects. Entomophagy is, means bug eating. Some people are entomophagists too. Some people eat bugs. Not me. Go, green. Green things for 25. Green things for 25. Big one in that category, teams, is as follows. When a plant respires, it releases what gas? Yes, Robert Goddard. Oxygen. Not oxygen, no. Nicholas Orm, here's a break for you. When a plant respires, it releases this gas, which the plant can then turn around and use in photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide? Yes, carbon dioxide. Absolutely right. Good. Red. Um, body systems for 25. Body systems for 25 points. Teams, look at the monitor in the studio, please. And yes, that is Lady Gaga. And of course, her eyes are what are so fascinating. They're so big in the center because she wears outsized contact lenses. This is a multiple choice question. Those outside contact lenses cover a lot of the white of the eye. Is the white of the eye known as the cornea, the macula, or the sclera? Cornea. cornea. No, not the cornea. It is not. Is the white of the eye that those contact lenses cover a lot of known as the cornea, the macula, or the sclera? No, Robert Cotter has the opportunity now. You can say it. What do you think, Cotter? Um, what, what is it? Um, sclera. The sclera, absolutely right. The macula is back there in the retina, and the cornea is in the front of the eye, and uh, you did well to come back on that. All right, go. Green. Uh, um, body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, hemoglobin is found in the blood, while the similar myoglobin is a pigment that is found in what kind of contractile tissue in your body? Hmm, Robert Goddard? Muscles. Muscles, absolutely right. Contract muscles, that was your clue there. Good answer. Green. Um, let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. Multiple choice question. Teams, when scientists long ago were mapping out longitude, they knew that they needed an exact timekeeping device. So did they use a barometer, a hygrometer, or a chronometer? Which of those three, Robert Goddard? Chronometer. Again? Cr um, chronometer. I, I don't hear, is that what they're saying? Yes, chronometer is absolutely right. Good points. Go green again. Um, science potpourri for 20. Science potpourri for 20. Teams, Angelina Jolie's new spy thriller movie has what same name as the most common condiment? Conan? Salt. Salt, absolutely right. The most common condiment you use at your dinner table. Absolutely right. Good movie, too. Go green. Um, science potpourri for 25. Potpourri for 25. Big one in that category. Come on, Nicholas Orm. This is a good question. What same H-initialed word means training falcons to fly and hunt and 
breaking in and using a computer network without authorization. Hacking. With same H word, Adobe. Hacking. Got it. Good. Go. Um, um, let's get let dateline signs for 15. Dateline for 15 points. Teams, your question is as follows. When the Hindenburg, the giant blimp, blew up over New Jersey, we discovered that hydrogen was far too flammable a gas to use. So now, what other gas do we use to put inside those blimps? Cunning. Helium. Got it. Good. Go. Three questions left. Um, dateline science for 20. Dateline, dateline for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Which of the following female scientists' papers are so radioactive, in fact, her recipes are so radioactive, that you still cannot touch them to this day? Diane Fossey, Rosalind Franklin, or Marie Curie? Robert Goddard. Marie Curie. Marie Curie, absolutely right, who worked with radium and polonium and died of radiation poisoning. Where next? Um, Dateline Science for 25. Dateline for 25, big one in that category, teams. Those miners that are trapped in the Chilean mine and have been down there for months, they are in some danger because there is no sunlight and they cannot manufacture what vitamin that we all need that comes from sunlight, Nicholas Orem. Vitamin D. Vitamin? D. D. Yes, indeed, ma'am. One question left. Let's get physical. 25 points. This will end the game. Teams, your question is as follows. What subatomic particle that is the anchor of all atoms has turned out? Robert Goddard. Um, Stevens. Um, yeah, I don't know. No answer? I will repeat for Nicholas Orm. What subatomic particle that is the anchor of all atoms has turned out to be smaller than most scientists thought? What do you think, Adobe? Molecules? Not molecules, protons. Protons, subatomic, proton, neutron, electron. The proton is supposedly smaller. That's the anchor of the nucleus. Well done. Teams, we will be back with a wrap-up in just a moment. Don't go away. And welcome back to Science Bowl. Terrific game. I hope you learned as much today as many of us did. These were terrific students. We're proud of all of them. Our final tally today is Nicholas Orem, 170. Robert Goddard, 330. What a game you had, guys. Emmanuel and Conan and Stephen, congratulations. We're going to see you in the game against Thomas Pullen. Mr. Jusha, you have a wonderful team here. Congratulations to you. Frederick Coates is our alternate. And next to Frederick is Frederick's dad. And Mr. Coates, you were on our program many years ago on uh, Thurgood Marshall, and it was Roger B. Taney at the time. And so we have another generation of science ball players. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Frederick, for being part of that team, and we will see you next time on Science Bowl. Bye-bye.